is going on guys? It is your boy, Sesso here with a video here today. Bring guys a After Effects slash Photoshop to turn on create your very own cool intermission screen. Uh-huh, you see? Like, it's pretty cool. If you guys know what intermission screens are, they're used for like streamers, uh, where they're like looking for a game or whatever, or want to talk to the chat and just have like their picture or their webcam and or their video and the chat on the side. It's very, very dope, very interactive. It's very attractive as well if you kind of have one that suddenly moves and looks pretty cool. So yeah, that's what's going on right here. And actually guys, today's video is actually sponsored by AEG, so if you guys have no idea who those individuals are, they're a returning sponsor for After Effects, where you can basically quickly drag and drop amazing text effects, transitions, or even HUD elements for like things, possibly for intermission screens, wink, wink, like hello. They're currently running a Black Friday sale, so if you of course enjoy it today, you can go ahead on the site and buy the entire bundle for quite literally a steal. And please be sure to check out their free plugins. Some of their free elements I actually use in my example intermission screen being the Motion Cafe UI. And if that's actually enough, 95% of their products include a free trial inside the actual pack management. So that, of course, is just another way. I mean, like, come on, seriously? And if you guys are interested, please be sure to check them out on the top of the description. Now, if you guys just give me a now because you won't be disappointed, I promise you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into this video today. Let's just get this thing going. All right, guys, let's go this thing going right here, right now. So, of course, first thing I'm going to, of course, do is hide this. And I'll give you guys a color scheme that I have on the top right already. So, color picker. I'm going to go through the colors. This is my secondary color that's going with my nice little burgundy color here. And we have our first highlight color, our secondary highlight color, and our uh, background color, which is right here. So, if you guys copy the hex codes that are down right here and pause the video or whatever to kind of get through those, and you can get uh, the exact same color scheme as me. So, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. So, I like to make a new layer. Control, Shift, N. You press Enter afterwards. And you just you, if you do that really quick, you just, make, you just look really, really cool. Um, so, just learn make a new layer at least right and uh if not of course bottom right how you make a new layer if we if you have problems there we're gonna have problems with the tutorial i promise we're gonna have problems anyway so pen tool bottom right of the canvas click on the outside of it right a pretty a pr i'll say like maybe like uh 25 of the way there right you go ahead and click near the middle area right around here and you want to go around the canvas and then uh when you have your first connection being the uh, actual shape is filled in you right click fill a path drop down use color we're going to select one of our highlight colors i want to click on this one personally press ok press ok again then right click delete path and then rinse and repeat so we're gonna make another new layer right this new layer is going to have more of like a triangle shape going on here right now if you guys want you can put as many triangle weird diagonals as you guys want make it look as fun as you guys want but i would think the shadows which comes after this is what's more important so don't really worry about what's going on too much you can pretty much follow me here also color scheme if it's not what you guys want Please go ahead and like maybe even color like click on this highlight color and if you guys want like a like a yellow or a blue or a blue tone or whatever just kind of move the hue bar leave this where this is when you guys copy the hex code and then get your color scheme by the way so right click fill path drop down use color I'm using this color right here okay right click deselect so we have two different colors right there now I'm gonna go in between these colors control shift and again pen tool make ourselves our last shape here right and right click fill path drop down use color and the third color basically for this little highlight is basically gonna be the actual background color so i'm gonna click the background color press ok press ok again and then right click deselect and we got ourselves this little canvas kind of going on here the bottom left looks kind of cool kind of fun and kind of like just kind of loud and fast so now i'm going to do is i'm gonna use a layer mask so what the layer mask is if i click on this of course take my brush right if you make a nice simple zero hardness brush nice soft brush right you can then take uh, black black erases white fills in while you click on the actual layer mask so if I take my black brush <laughs> give myself a little highlights there right let's go on this one right here add a layer mask take a brush and erase around here let's click on this shape right here uh, layer mask brush and kind of just erase a little bit over here as well so if you guys were seeing me how I was really quickly clicking on each shape you hold control and click on it now if you guys want to have this setting already have on layer make sure it's on layer not group that we can just basically click on anything you guys want with control click and just have that be freely selected um so now that we have this I'm gonna make a new layer control shift and again right so with this new layer I'm gonna actually take a marquee tool and I'm gonna click on the left side of the canvas or top left side of the canvas all the way to the bottom right side of the canvas, the entire thing is going to be selected with the marquee tool, the right single marquee tool. Then I'm going to hold Alt Backspace or press Alt Backspace on your keyboard to fill in any color. Now, if you guys just want to make it black, you guys can definitely just make it black because this is going to be your actual like video like screen, like what your gameplay is going to be in or your webcam, whatever your webcam or however you want your scenario of your intermission screen to look like. So we are in a 1920 by 1080 right file new 1920 by 1080 300 resolution document size this is pretty much the most standard you would get when it comes to doing graphic design for like twitch uh like starting soon 
offline, all that stuff is basically in the same dimension. And usually even your camera is probably nice to win about 1080 being HD, like 1080, of course. So whatever you gotta do, I would say go with this size here when it comes to like filling in that thing, uh, this entire canvas with black um, to be like your go-to for when you wanna definitely size things out. So I'm gonna say right around here, right, we take our black. <laughs> I think right about here is pretty good. So uh, hopefully these colors I realized don't look really crappy in the render. I would hope it doesn't. So I'm gonna go ahead, put in our intermission word, right? We're gonna make this white, just like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead, move this over here to the corner, kind of line this up with that right here. Press Control T on our keyboard to free transform, but I'm gonna right click this, uh, click this, click this, and do skew. Sorry, it's literally it's almost 3 a.m. Just saying. Uh, skew. Take the top right of the box. So you click on it and you just uh, drag it towards the right. It kind of makes it kind of like fast and makes a nice little, uh, basically like a, an italicized version of it, right? Now this font, by the way, is Gotham Black, if you guys do not know. But for the subtext, we're gonna put in Q, right? Now for this, you can put in Q in a lobby, searching for a lobby, or like be right back. But something, I think a subtext would just make this look pretty strong. So I would definitely suggest you guys to put a subtext because this can also help you guys with your secondary color, which is gonna be that yellow for me, just like so. Boom, cool. Now we have that, we start to just kind of see how it's coming to life. Now I'm gonna go ahead, make a new layer uh, right above our highlight. So by the way, you guys should definitely be naming everything here. This is a highlight, right, highlight 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 and the reason we're naming it when we go into after effects of course you want to make sure that you have everything named that it's just really easy to kind of go to this is the video box <laughs> and this is going to be our first shadow uh shadow boom so now with our first shadow we're going to take a pen tool and just basically follow these lines you can just kind of follow these lines if you guys want to right kind of just kind of went through here through there right click make selection press ok we're gonna take our black, or we're gonna take our brush, excuse me, so we're gonna press B on our keyboard, take our brush. Right now we're gonna take uh, our foreground color and we're gonna click on the actual background color and we're gonna make our background color a little darker by taking this blue circle right here, right? And then dragging it a little bit further down. That way it kind of stays not being pure black and it's kind of weird, but it's also it's still in that same color scheme, right? We're gonna click, drag, and almost kind of like paint. We're gonna not use the middle of our brush, right? You can see how far away my brush is from the actual selection. We're basically using the actual feathered kind of brush look, the soft brush look to get a nice clean like paintbrush-esque shadow to it, right? So you can see me kind of do like that, right? You can see the shadow right there. I can take my eraser if I want to and erase it there. We'll take this one, erase it there. Now, if you want to, you can hold Alt on your keyboard and drag it around and you can just press Control T to free transform it and give yourself more, right? We'll do one right there. We'll do it over here. We'll just kind of erase it going this way, right? Now, if it's, uh, it's for me, it's a little bit too dark. If you guys need to, I might have should have made it darker. But if you can take your lightness, you just lower this down, and you can get it to a little bit more darker of a color. I would say even negative sixty-four. If you want to go through all of them and just put the same exact thing in, if you guys need to make the shadow darker, I'm gonna pick it a little bit darker for me though, right? So, take this, put one over there. And I would say it's pretty okay and pretty good. And I hope, like I said, uh, once again, that you can see this in the render because, oops, I don't know if you can, but let's hope to all that you guys can. So once you have your shadows, you want to go ahead and make a new layer, press B on your keyboard, and we're going to take the lightest color, right? And then we're going to make it even more lighter by bringing this actual circle up, press OK, making our brush pretty much like 1800 size diameter and zero hardness. We're going to click just like so and then use linear dodge add, get ourselves a nice little light color in there. Now if we wanna make it a little more light over there, more over here with a smaller brush to kind of make it look pretty cool. I think that looks pretty good and I like how that looks. So now I'm gonna go ahead, click on the actual video box. Oh, before I do that, let's actually do the actual uh, stroke. So the stroke is gonna be what's gonna to happen to be like circling and all that cool stuff. So I'm gonna take my first highlight uh, shape that we ever did Hold Alt, drag it right above our, or right below our video box, just like, so this is our light, by the way. So right above your light, you can do that, right? So this layer right here is that first ever sheet layer that we did. Now we did erase stuff on it with the layer mask. So you have to make sure you fill it back in with white. You can quickly do that by pressing Control Backspace. You can see that the actual, uh, uh, how do you say, the thumbnail itself fills it back in with white. When you do that, Control Backspace. Now I'm gonna take my fill, lower it all the way down to zero, double click, put on a stroke, now for this stroke, I'll give you guys this gradient uh, just so you guys have it. We're gonna make the stroke size, 
let's say 30, okay? We wanna make it pretty like subtle, but also uh, big enough that you can see when it's actually switching colors and rotating and waving, right? You wanna press okay, right? Just like so. Now, if I drag this, you'll see that the fill lowers only the actual uh, picture image quality, or not picture image quality, the picture opacity, but not the actual layer styles. So what I want is only this top half of this. So I'm gonna do right click, rasterize layer, take my M marquee tool, right click marquee tool, highlight only the top part of the actual stroke, right click, layer via cut, delete this part right here. We're gonna call this gradient one. Right, so if I drag this, you'll see this only thing that's gonna be in this actual layer is that top part. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste my layer style that I had before. Right, now this layer style here, I'll give you guys this as well, but it has basically an inner glow on it, uh, 47 opacity, uh, linear dodge add, and the actual color is basically this little uh, color that we had for the, around this color, so you can see the actual hex code right here if you guys wanna copy it. Zero choke, six, uh, eight size, and of course that gradient uh, I'm using, I'll, I'll give you guys that. Uh, the outer glow, which is basically a nice little pink, which is kind of like, I've just took the actual background color and just made it a little more brighter, of course. We got a pink from that. Linear dash add, 98 opacity, zero spread, 108 uh, size, all that good stuff, press okay. Now that's our first little string there, and I'm gonna do that last, or our second one, uh, make a new layer, right? For the second one, we're gonna just kinda go on the bottom section here. And, uh, something like this. Let's do something like that. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with any color, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna simply just right click, copy layer style, right click, paste layer style right on that one. And we got ourselves a nice little secondary one. So those two uh, like kind of like shining light beams really, um, we're just gonna kind of like circle around with a nice little gradient on it. It's gonna look pretty freaking sick. Now if you want to add even more, you can definitely like go in, right, you can add yourself like a nice little one, like a little cheeky one right there, right? Do like that. I want to add another one like right around here. I just saw this by the way, so you can probably expect me to do it for the final. Well, um, right, make it look pretty cool. That little, the, the other one's overkill. Let's just go ahead and just stop with like three of them. So, once you guys get around here, you can go ahead now and do your little video box. So, for the video box, we're going to be using a stroke, right? Outside position, give yourself maybe two or three points. I would say even two is pretty clean enough for me. The drop shadow, for the drop shadow, we're gonna take our size, uh, spread all the way down to zero. We're gonna take our distance, put it on six, and put our size on 18. Make sure our color is pure black. Press okay, angles on 90. Press okay again, you'll see that nice, simple drop shadow right there. Looks pretty nice, pretty clean, and we're happy and satisfied with that. Now, make another new layer, okay? This layer right here are the lights, or gradient two. Right, those have the gradients on it. So we make sure we name it gradients that we know that that layer has a gradient on it to actually make it motion designed. Um, right, so this new layer here is gonna be for your chat box. But if you want it to be like your webcam, you can definitely make this nice little simple camera box like that for like for your webcam. Or if you wanna make the entire canvas again, fill it in with the color and make it small enough. That way if your webcam is 1080p, you can make it that 1080p scaling. However, I'm gonna make myself a simple rectangled chat box, just like so. I'm gonna fill this in with pure black by fill content black, right? Right click fill, content black, press okay. Right click deselect. I'm gonna copy the layer style on the video box and then simply paste it onto this right here. And uh, I'm actually gonna lower the fill down to about 50 or so, make sure that looks pretty cool. Now if you guys want to, you can just kind of put the word, if you click on the word intermission, drag it over, make a copy of it and put like slash slash chat. If you guys want to be a little, nice little Branding there for that. If you want to also make these things, that color right here, that can look pretty cool. I don't know if I said it in this clip here, but if you click and if you press escape, that is basically the quickest way for you guys to kind of exit. I usually always press the check button. It changed my life and I hope it changes for you. I literally always press the check button. You can check in every single video. I always press check. Now I literally press escape. It saved my life. I just want to make sure I say that again if I didn't say that already. Um, cause this is like my second take and it's 3 a.m. So kind of thing. Um, so right here, I'm pretty much done with my personal stuff. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to move on into After Effects. So once again, make sure everything's named. You're going to of course save the file as a PNG where you can find our PSD as where you can find it. But on the bottom right, you can put like your social medias here, maybe your sponsor logos or wherever that person's sponsor logos are, maybe his actual logo, maybe you can put like a little spot to put like recent donator past donator stuff like that to make it even more kind of fun and interactive that's for you to kind of explore but for me 
my part is pretty much done here let's go ahead and move this into after effects and then finish it off in there oh right before we finish it off i forgot so intermission i'm gonna take this word Control j to make a duplicate of it take one of them make it pretty big right by pressing Control t and then it's calling holding alt clicking on one of those angles or one of those uh, little points anchor points drag this below the video box video overlay uh blend mode overlay excuse me and we're gonna take our nice little simple uh boxer here right our uh, how do you call this i almost forgot the name english is hard our what layer mask i caught you dude it's so i'm so tired uh right take a brush give a nice little erase in a few spots there we go now the top half is done now we'll go back into the after effects let's go all right homies now I actually finish this tutorial here in after effects we're gonna go ahead and go to file import file we're gonna find our file i'm just gonna go to quick access it should be the first one you just of course had saved right import we're gonna use composition layers uh excuse me composition retain layer sizes and edible layer styles press ok once you guys done that you'll see that you actually have a little composition uh right here i'm gonna just double click on this now this will basically give you guys of course the psd that you guys have with all the original names all that good stuff i also personally added in my example uh for the tutorial these little slashes here little social media buttons here just kind of have that be a thing so with this, all you want to end up doing is looking for the words that says gradient one and gradient two or wherever you end up naming your things that you made sure that set had gradient in it, right? So that you guys know what to uh, animate. So I'm going to, excuse me, right click on the canvas somewhere, go to composition settings, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my duration is on uh, two minutes. Basically, it's 0, 0 colon. Am I even going to try this? I'm just going to zoom in. Yeah, just right here. Boom. Make sure your composition is on two minutes. All that good stuff. By the way, when you import your settings being from your... Uh, the 1920 by 1080p document size in Photoshop, it'll actually retain all that cool little information in your composition settings regardless. If it doesn't, make sure you, of course, change it, uh, but it should. So, gradient one, we'll go ahead, drop this down, go to layer styles, go ahead and go to gradient overlay, and where it says angle here, we're gonna go ahead and scroll maybe five seconds in, or, or so, right? And then just click on this little stopwatch here, that will add our first uh, uh, key point, right? And we're gonna go ahead and move up to around maybe one minute and 10 seconds. Okay. Now right here, we're going to go ahead and just see the zero. Then we're going to see a plus uh, 5.0. Basically the first zero, you want to change it to a one by clicking on it, clicking on one, pressing enter, basically putting one in front basically means from point A to point B for your keyframes is a one full rotation, right? So you're going to see it's seeing one full rotation. You kind of see it going on right here. But for me, this weird rotation that's going on right now does not look as good. So I would like for you guys, of course, try every single one. But for me, I know which one's going to look good. If I go to style, change it from linear to angle, and you'll see it just looks a little bit more smoother. And it looks way more kind of like passive and not so like hard and aggressive. And just like so, I'm going to do the same exact thing on gradient two. So I'm going to go over here, gradient two, layer styles, gradient overlay, go to maybe like, I'll make this one go at like 15 seconds, right? And I'll say angle just like so. We'll go ahead all the way up to maybe one minute and 25 seconds. Say this does one full rotation just like so. Change this to angle. And you'll see that all that kind of stuff is moving. It looks pretty cool, pretty simple. This has a nice feel to it. Maybe angle for this one might not work. Let's try linear. So yeah, I think linear works pretty good for this one. Angle works best for this one. So try it out. You guys will notice, right? Quick little pause. I just want to say really quickly, this is a really great opportunity around this time in the tutorial to go ahead and try to add in some really fun elements from AE Juice. So once again, I'm actually using the free HUD um, package and you can get it yourself in the description down below and or just go to the site and just download the free ones and just download uh, all the other starter packs, stuff like that. Really dope. I just want to let you guys know this is a really good opportunity to put it in here. It's really easy. You just simply just drag and drop it. You can change the color. Super freaking fun. Super dope. I just want to let you guys know. So now that that is done, I want to do one other thing. I'm going to just say at 20 seconds, okay? We're going to go ahead and make a new shape layer, just like so. You'll see that shape layer is right here. I'm going to make sure it's below my actual uh, video box, by the way. So with this new shape layer, I'm going to take the pen tool, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and click outside the canvas and click somewhere over here or so and make a simple little line going through. Now this, I'm going to make sure my stroke is turned on by clicking on it, choosing a color. The color I chose was the actual color from this uh, eyedropper tool, just click right around where this yellow was, press OK, right? So when your stroke is turned on, I would say around three or maybe even two points is pretty good. I'm gonna say three for me is pretty good for now, right? And once you have this, you wanna go ahead and just drop this down. You wanna see where it says add, click on that, 
Then you want to go to where it says uh, trim paths, right? With trim paths, we're going to click on the down arrow, just like so. Now start and end, you'll see. So we're going to go ahead and just keyframe start and end. However, your end should be at zero, not 100%. And you'll see if we scroll through, let's just say, let's make it last like two seconds. That might be even too long, but let's just make it last around two or three seconds. And then what we're going to do, take our end point, put it all the way to 100, and take our start and put this all the way to 100 as well. Boom. So you'll see. And before we put that to 100, we want to put the start a little in front of this actual endpoint. So you'll see if I click and let it go, it does this nice little simple like kind of zoom through the actual canvas. And I think it looks pretty cool. Hold on. I'll let you uh, see it when it renders. All right, cool. So you can see the render right here, right? If I just kind of like play it, if I just click offside, you'll see that there's this nice little clean, simple, subtle little line kind of going through. You can make them yellow, white, burgundy, with the hair the heck you guys want to make it uh, kind of be, put as many you guys want. Right, maybe have one going down the middle or whatnot, but I think it's a super, super clean look when it comes to just adding a little bit more spice to the actual canvas itself, right? Of course, and while, of course, the actual colors are going on in the background, just has a very nice, subtle feel, not too busy. And if you guys want it to be faster, if this was too slow for you, right, you just take these two midpoints right here, the two endpoints, excuse me, and move them closer towards the left, but I think that speed is A-OK. -okay. Now, when it comes to rendering it, I will give you guys another Kodak, once again, the same one that I gave you guys last time. It just makes it super easy for Streamlabs. This makes it a nice uh, HD quality, and also making the actual Kodak, uh, excuse me, the actual file size smaller. Um, so no no quality loss, but also that makes it super, super small, so that way it doesn't lag in Streamlabs. But to get there, Control M, right? Module, you want to go ahead and use, of course, Format AVI. Now, when you guys want to change the uh, actual Kodak, you want to go to Format Options, We'll go to video Kodak drop down. I don't have it installed on this computer. However, you'll see logarith, right? And when you go to click on that one, you go ahead and press OK and then whatnot, right? And then you press OK again. And so there's no audio in this, if unless you guys want to put audio in it. However, audio should be put off. You press OK and then you, of course, change your output and you're good to go. That is basically the video here today. And I just, I'm so tired. I love you guys so very much. I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Once again, it's a nice, simple, clean animation when it comes to just kind of having a nice, clean intermission screen. Or you can, of course, transition this into a starting soon screen. Whatever the heck you guys want to do. Um, but I think the style itself is super clean. You're going to enjoy it. And once again, AE Juice, thank you very much for sponsoring the video. You guys are super clutch. I've been using them every single day. Even the people in the 100D's office, I've been using it a lot. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Since so HQ out, don't have to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive. I can't even Millie Rock. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.